difference between blocking inflammation and, and promoting the resolution of inflammation is, in my opinion, some, uh, a, a game changer in how we look at dealing with inflammatory conditions. And the reason being that uh, for many years we've been, in a way, indoctrinated that we had to inhibit inflammation. And, and so for that, many, many decades of research went into developing inhibitors to specific aspects of the biosynthetic pathways for molecules, uh, like the eicosanoids, where we have the non-steroidals, antibodies to inhibit cytokines and their, and their signaling. And what that, has been, what that does is that it, in the short term, it does reduce inflammation, because obviously these molecules are part of the propagation response, but also it, in the longer term, it interferes with the ability of the body to deal with another inflammatory stimulus. So for example, with the anti-TNF therapeutics, one of the main side effects of these therapeutics is that it exposes the body to infections. So yes, you deal with the inflammation, let's say if it's arthritis, you get better, the pain goes away, but you then become prone to getting infections. The other side of anti-inflammation is that you cannot, pro the, the trunks don't promote the repair and regeneration of tissues. And in many of these diseases, we do need that aspect, right? Because we've, we, the, the tissues are damaged, we want to repair them so that we can regain function. Prozolving mediators do all this. And the reason why they do all this is because they reprogram the immune response. So here we're not talking about inhibiting something very specific, which is what all of, a lot of the anti-inflammatories do. Here we're talking about getting the whole resp immune response as one package and reprogram it to promote repair and regeneration of damaged tissues. We don't block the production of pro-inflammatory molecules. Instead, we down-regulate them, we reduce the levels. And what this allows the body to do is, if there is another sti inflammatory stimulus, like an infection, it can deal with it. It can actually deal with the, the inflammatory, the bacterium, the virus that comes in, because it can mount another inflammatory response to clear that. And inflammation, in its essence, is protective, so we don't want to inhibit it. All we want to do is facilitate its termination, so that we can go and repair and regenerate tissues. questions that we've been dealing with is how how and why does the resolution of inflammation fail and it what we've learned in over the last few years is that the mechanisms that lead to chronic inflammation or failure of resolution as we now refer to it are very different in different settings in some cases it's because the the ability of the body to, to initiate the production of pro-resolving mediators is hampered and that could be for many different reasons. It could be genetic factors that lead to, the, to an impaired upregulation of the pathways or the enzymes that lead to the formation of these molecules. Other aspects that lead to, and something that we've recently come across, is that there are endogenous molecules that block the production of these pro-resolving mediators at specific pathways. So for example, in patients with cardiovascular disease, we found that these patients have higher endogenous adenosine levels in their blood, and adenosine is a known inhibitor of the 5 lipoxygenase oxygenase enzyme, which is key to producing pro-resolving mediators. So this then leads to impaired production. Another aspect that, that was recently described was that there are single nucleotide polymorphisms in both receptors as well as enzymes to the biosynthetic pathways. And in the receptor side, this leads to a receptor that although is expressed, does not signal, does not mediate the activity of the pro-resolving molecules. So therefore, even though the body can produce them, they have no biological action because the receptor is not doing its job. With the enzymes, it leads to a, an altered production of pro-resolving mediators, and something that we, we've recently come across is also that different single nucleotide polymorphisms may uh, dictate how the body responds to drugs, to, to, to therapeutics. So, uh, it is a little bit complicated. Uh, the, we, we're start, starting to get a handle on it, um, but what leads to the, to the actual defect is 
and I, I have a strong feeling will be very specific and it, it might actually also there might also be a factor that we're still exploring of also gender specificity too um, where males and females have a different way of producing mediators a different way to reacting to an inflammatory stimulus and that will play a factor too so in terms of, of regulating the pathways there are several aspects some that uh, that we've already described so there is for example regulation at the microRNA level there are specific microRNAs that are associated with the regulation of the biosynthetic enzymes as well as the regulation of the receptors there's the availability of substrate the intermediates versus the versus the precursors um, and something else that we recently started to explore is also uh, DNA methylation status there is uh, in especially in innate immune cells it's very important and it reflects the ability of a cell to produce these mediators because, it ch because of a change in phenotype of the cells. So there's uh, several factors that will impinge on the biosynthesis of the pathways.